Good day everyone and this is your lecturer Asuni Lady Zila Biola. We are going to start with section 1. What is underachievement? So here is a learning objective for this lecture. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to at least state one definition of underachievement. You should be able to give three examples of behaviors that underachieving students exhibit. Also, you should be able to identify underachieving students in your care. So what you're going to cover in this lecture is first, and I'm going to go over some definitions of underachievement because there are more than one definition. You see, there are a lot of definitions, but all of them are related and they are useful in identifying underachievers. Then we go over to the behaviors of underachievers and how you be able to recognize those behaviors that can tell you that a student is underachieving or about to underachieve and lastly we are going to go over what is called the dog test for identifying underachieving students so let's start with the definition of underachievement we are going to go over concepts like what it is and the causes of underachievement so what is underachievement? Underachievement is a discrepancy between expected achievement and actual achievement of particular students. Now, you may have noticed that there are some students that their grades are usually below your expectations. Your expectations of them can be termed their potential, especially if your expectation is realistic you see when you when you base your expectations on their potential and it is said to be realistic so if are, your expectations of them is different from what they usually give you you know in line with your understanding of their potential then those students can be said to be underachievers Here's another definition of underachievement. Underachievement is doing poorly on purpose. You see, students who do poorly on purpose are called underachievers. This is because their actual grades are lower than their expected grades because it is intentional. As we move on in this course, you would understand this. Now, thirdly, Underachievement is an unwillingness or inability of the student to think positively and act positively in a bid to have grades that meet our expectations. See, the student is unable or unwilling to think positively and act positively in order to have grades that meet our expectations or grades that are in line with their potential. And there are two factors that contribute to students choosing to underachieve. You know, it mentioned just a, a few seconds ago that two students intentionally underachieve. So there are two factors that contribute to that. One, emotional and motivational factors. And secondly, factors concerned with the sources of their learning and the resources that they use in learning. Sources meaning the teachers and you know every other person that is involved in their learning process and the learning resources refer to the materials and the con the contents that they use in learning so these two factors cause a low performance with a corresponding low motivation to do better and let me explain this again this way when students have uh emotional and motivational factors some of these factors include you know a low motivation a low interest in, in school you know inability to cope say because of hunger you know parental negligence and so on so these personal issues that students have caused them to choose to become underachievers now underachievement is a discrepancy between the actual and expected achievement of a student due to reasons such as 
difficulty adapting to school, low motivation, low interest in learning, parental neg negligence, and poverty. It is important for you to know that um, underachieving students do not necessarily have bad grades, just that their grades are lower than expected, just that their grades are below your expectations, just that their grades are not in line with their potential. Also, underachievement is not hereditary, although a parent can contribute to his child becoming an underachiever. This is very, very important. Now, it's also important that you know that a student is said to be an underachiever if he has an inability to perform appropriately for his age, talent, and potential. Of course, due to the two factors that we uh, mentioned which are emotional and motivational factors and factors concerned with learning sources and learning resources you see teachers are learning sources there are some times that teachers contribute to underachievement so that if the teacher neglects a particular student or if the teacher has favorites in the, in the class and ignores the other students who perhaps you know are not his favorites and so on it may cause the students to have issues such as motivational and emotional issues that can make the student choose to become an underachiever or to, to choose to perform lower than our expectations now you know that i have promised you that i would tell you the behaviors that underachievers exhibit. You see, when students choose to underachieve, they exhibit certain behaviors that further proves that they are doing poorly on purpose, such as leaving their homework undone, having little or no interest in school, never doing uh, the assignment, you know, not following school rules and regulation. All of which you would agree are direct and they are obvious you know they do it directly and they are not concerned about what everybody thinks about them you know they are it's, it's a show of arrogance and defiance and there are some other behaviors that are in, indirect such as being easily distracted you know having an unorganized way of doing things having low interest in doing tax that are considered hard, you know, having interest in tasks that are considered simple, having a feeling of helplessness, you know, inner conflict, low self-motivation, low self-esteem, and procrastinating. So when students have, when students use these behaviors that are considered indirect, you may uh, begin to think that perhaps they do not have control over the situation look closely and you find out that they made that choice to stay in that state now as we move on you you understand why i said so now direct behaviors are actions that show deviance arrogance and can and you can even conclude that the student is a typical underachiever in indirect behaviors however students are sometimes not able to adjust on their own and they may need your help you know in order to do things differently and hence they've been subconsciously programmed to behave that that way you know via their habits and their association for example so as you can see underachieving students do poorly on purpose and they display behaviors that shows that they are underachievers it's important to understand what is called the dog test for proving without a doubt that a student is an underachieving student. Now, the dog test is such that if the student is performing below the potential, that student is, you know, likely to be an underachiever. If he behaves like an underachiever, that student is likely to be an underachiever. If he performs like an underachiever, that student is likely to be an underachiever. But if all three are present, then the student is definitely an underachiever. Now, 
there are many ways to classify underachievers. All underachievers can be classified based on their behaviors. Just like I mentioned, you know, we have direct or indirect behaviors. And you can also classify them by their performance. And then lastly, you know, you can uh, classify them by their performance in relation to their potential. It's important to be able to recognize uh, underachievers. You know, you should be able to tell that a particular student is underachieving. It is important to be able to recognize these behaviors so that you can tell if a student is an underachiever. It's also important for you to tell whether a student is performing below its potential. And it's also important that you know when a student is performing like an underachiever. So you'll agree that we have covered a lot in this uh, lecture. We've covered the definition of underachievement. We've covered what causes a student to underachieve. We've covered the doc test and how it can be used to confirm if a student is an underachiever. And also went over the behaviors that uh, underachieving students exhibit. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. See you in the next lecture.